everybody and welcome to Nathan on Shuffle and to my latest episode of New Music Friday on Saturday. This is July 29th, 2022. This is the show where I give you guys the top five prog news headlines for the week, talk about the top five prog singles, and give you an update on what's happening with the channel. And before we start and get into the news today, I wanted to point your attention towards a video I did with Notes Reviews on their channel. It was a really fun time going through the Marillion albums. And I've been really preparing these Marillion album rankings for quite some time, so I'd appreciate it if you gave that uh, video a view and a like and went over to uh, Notes channel to see that one. So I'll put the link in the description of where you can find that one. So that would be really great and I'd really appreciate that. So. Uh, first news item on the list today, a new release today, a big one for me at least. This is uh, Rio Okamoto, Myth of the Mastrophus. This is an album uh, from keyboardist from Spock's Beard, and this is a solo album. A uh, long time since his previous solo album, but this one should be a real treat for fans. Uh, I just barely listened to it for the first time. It's released today, out there and available in the world. And it's just such a joy and such a fun listen. So I really recommend it, especially if you're a big Spock's Beard fan, Neil Morse fan, Transatlantic fan, all of those things. Uh, this should really scratch that itch for some just great, fun, infectious symphonic prog. And so really a big host of different guests on this album. All of the Spock's Beard members... Uh, besides Neil, of course, but all of the rest are there in some capacity, so it feels a bit like a uh, Spock's Beard record, um, but there's also other influences and other things going on, other other artists like uh, uh, Rio's bandmates in Project, uh, Michael Sadler, Mike Keneally, Jonathan Mover, uh, just so many different people. Steve Hackett's on the album. Uh, Randy McStein has a wonderful vocal uh, track on the album. It's just, it's really cool. And Rio wrote a lot of this music with Michael Whiteman of I Am The Manic Whale fame. And he plays a lot of guitars on this and does a lot of vocals as well. So really a cool collaborative effort with a lot of different notable figures. Feels like a big all-star type project. I hope to do a review of it this week. Uh, I'm a little behind in my schedule uh, because of work and other things that are taking uh, priority in life right now, but I'm still hopeful that I can get it out by uh, this upcoming week on Tuesday in my typical review spot. So look for that to come out soon. Uh, really excited about the album. I think it's really awesome. Um, item number two. This is a little bit uh, news that took place, you know, this is probably about a week old, this news, but I wanted to mention it because it's important to me. Uh, Steve Morse has decided to step away from Deep Purple permanently. Um, unfortunately, his wife, uh, Janine, is battling cancer and requires a lot of care and attention, and he wants to spend time with her and away from the band. And so it's an understandable reason, and of, of course, uh, the band all support him in this decision for him to step aside at this time. But of course, Steve Morse is a legendary guitar player, has been a member of Deep Purple for quite some time, has been touring with them um, for a long while. So it's 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 a big change, and it, it just is an unfortunate turn of events, and hopefully uh, his wife is okay and, and they're able to uh, have... Uh, some good moments together and be able to utilize this time to spend together during her health issues. So um, just wanted to mention that and I'm especially interested in how this might affect Flying Colors, which is a band I love that features Steve Morse and of course Neil Morse, Mike Portnoy, uh, and all of the folks, Casey McPherson, Dave LaRue. Um, so It'll be interesting to see if that project is able to continue. Maybe they'll be able to record but not spend the time on a tour. Um, or maybe Steve Morse is just basically retiring at this point. You know, it remains to be seen, but uh, just thought it was notable. And I wish the best, of course, for, for their family and for his wife especially during this difficult uh, time. So hopefully uh, everything turns out okay in that situation. Um, item number three that I've been seeing a lot of people talking about this. Of course, this is really something that's important to me, so I had to mention it. Transatlantic played their last show of their latest Absolute Universe tour. Uh, it was last night, July 28th in Paris, and there's been a lot of chatter about this because it very well may be the very last show of Transatlantic, period. 
which is kind of a sad thing to think about because Transatlantic has been historically one of my all-time favorite bands. So uh, it would be really sad to see them leave, but it seems like the band feels like this is may, might be a good point for it to happen. And they're talking about this show as if it's the last time that they'll play together. So uh, we'll see. Of course, you know, time may pass and they may do a reunion or something in the future. But Transatlantic is always a project that takes long breaks in between albums. Um, I think Mike Portnoy always meant for it to be more of an event kind of thing, you know, because it's a super group, not an, a, a band that tours regularly. So, um, so who knows, you know, but I think they're all realizing as they get older and as they are involved in so many other bands and projects, the idea of the ba- of Transatlantic coming back together for a future album tour and all that stuff, uh, the chances may be slim, you know, it's kind of a sad reality perhaps and so i think they're preparing themselves for that possibility and you know going out on a high note with this really great uh final gig that they had in paris which it sounds like will be uh immortalized on a live blu-ray release sometime in the in the future probably in a year or so i would imagine or you know so it'll be interesting to see how that goes how that tour uh is wrapped up on that night Um, but people have been saying it was a magical night and a special experience and all the band members have been chiming in on social media about how special the gig was. So it sounds like it was a really magical evening, a great tour, a great album, uh, maybe a great high note to end on for the group, but you never know in the future, there could be other things happening, but for now it looks like they're pretty much taking, a. A hiatus and it may be an indefinite one so we'll see how that goes in the future um item number four i thought this was cool i saw this um being talked about a little bit um keyboard masters rudess uh, wakeman sharinian downs and more featured in an all-star collection called synthesizer classics so some of the most widely respected keyboardists in the prog community um are on this collection of synthesizer music. Uh, Really interesting. This new collection features all exclusive and brand new recordings by such world-renowned pros as Rick Wakeman, Asia's Jeff Downs, folks as Thies Van Leer and Larry Fast, along with several others, reaching back into the past and recreating classics by Kraftwerk, uh, John Carpenter, and lots more. So some really interesting uh, material that seems to be being covered on this. So this is out for pre-order now. Really interesting uh, collection of names and, and different things to check into. So I just wanted to mention that briefly. That could be something interesting to anticipate in the future if you're a big fan of synthesizer work and these really notable prog keyboardists and what they might do with their interpretations of some of these more uh, soundtrack, uh, ambient, uh type of music, instrumental, I would imagine, um, tracks that utilize synthesizer. So really interesting, I thought. And number five, also really interesting, uh, the band Glass Hammer is completing their Scalagrim trilogy with a new album, At the Gate, that's coming out October 7th. Glass Hammer is a modern symphonic prog band. They've been around the block quite a while. They're uh, from the U.S., and they're really talented. They've done this trilogy of albums recently that sort of delve into fantasy and sci-fi a little bit sword and sorcery novels they tell a continuous story i believe there's also a novel that uh is complementing this work as well that was released earlier this year so it's a big project by the group um utilizing a lot of heavier styles of music there's a lot of maybe early black sabbath rush you know heavier riffs and stuff for a band that tends to stay more in the symphonic yes style prog vein but it's a cool cool blend of different styles and really is a good uh it really focuses on music that uh tells the story that's on on display here so there's some heavier moments some darker things um so it makes sense that they're going to put some of that in in the makes so uh steve babb is one of the members band leader steve babb keyboardist fred schrindel uh, and drummer aaron ralston kind of make up the the typical trio and vocalist hannah pryor is back on this record as well babb says to expect another 70s metal influence project but also promises a return to the symphonic prog sound the band is best known for so this should be a cool uh 
conclusion to the trilogy um if you're involved in that story if you haven't heard these albums yet they're definitely worth checking out dreaming city was the first one that came out in 2020 and into the breach was last year's album in 2021 scalagram into the breach and this one now at the gate so it should be really a cool thing to check out if you're into that style of of symphonic prog um, and a bonus item, I wanted to also mention that our date has been set for the next Cruise to the Edge. Uh, the date is March 8th, 2024. So it's actually a little blaze away. There's apparently not going to be a cruise in 2023, so we have to wait until 2024. Me and my wife, ever since the previous cruise went on, we were a little bit jealous that we weren't able to make that one. Just didn't work with the timing and with the finances and you know it's a big endeavor to plan and, and stuff but we wanted to attend the next one because we've heard so many people recommend it to us we went on the prognation at sea cruise quite a while back that we really loved but we haven't been able to go on any cruise since that's prog themed and so we've really been talking about it and we really want to go to this 2024 cruise so we're planning we're we're hoping that that's in the cards for us so it might be a fun experience you know hopefully the channel's still going at that point and maybe you know i can meet some of the people from my subscribers who comment a lot about it because i know a lot of people who comment on my videos are also people who go to this cruise so uh could be a fun experience to meet a lot of people and to have fun in that sort of setting you know so i'm hopeful that that will be the case and that we'll be able to go but of course it's very early to really make those t types of plans but that's what we're looking at so i wanted to mention that um in the singles list today check it out in the description there's a lot of cool singles to check out that i want to point your attention towards there's a new single from the rio album that came out today uh called chrysalis the uh, the track that's featuring uh, randy mcstein so that's definitely worth your attention really beautiful great track probably the the most ballad-esque track of the album but it's 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 a real highlight so definitely want to check out king's x uh have a new single give it up that's going to be from their new upcoming studio album, Three Sides of One, that's coming out September 2nd, so definitely check that one out. Birth has a, a, has a video out for their track Long Way Down from their latest album, Born, which came out uh, just a couple weeks ago. A really great psychedelic, old-school prog sound. Definitely worth checking out. I put in the uh, Pink Floyd Dogs 2018 re remakes that has been released a really great uh track of course me and jenna reacted to the original version we didn't really take the remix version when we did it but uh we love that track i love that track dogs is just a, a classic in the genre um but it's a cool taste of what's to come with the remakes project of animals that's coming out september 16th and then i also put in a track from derek sherinian uh called aurora australis uh, that's one of the big expanded instrumental tracks from his new album that just came out as well. A uh, new video and everything for that is, is really spectacular. And I tacked on an additional cool track from Brian Eno called There Were Bells, which is previewing his new album Forever and Ever No More coming out on October 14th. So uh, definitely some cool singles to check out. Uh, like I mentioned, go check out the Marillion ranking video. I've been promising it. I decided to do it with notes because it just, they were doing their own ranking at the same time. And so it made sense to collaborate as we were discussing it and figuring out the logistics. And it helped to have someone to bounce ideas off of and to uh, get a second opinion on these Marillion albums because it's a really big catalog and I wanted to make sure the show really uh, was deserving of this big catalog so hopefully you guys enjoy that um, this week on on uh, this channel there was a great uh, hopefully great to you guys uh, I thought it was pretty good uh, porcupine tree ranking that I did this past week that I really would point your guys's attention towards as well a really great uh, time was had there and a lot of people have been giving great comments so I'm really I'm really appreciative of that and the respect that you guys are giving me um, like I said I'm excited to get into the Rio album Rio Okamoto's album uh, coming up this Tuesday I'm hoping 
Um, if it comes out a little later, uh, I apologize, but I'm trying to get everything in, even though I've had a busy schedule this week. Um, and beyond that, just should be a lot of fun things to cover, as usual, coming up. Um, I hope you guys will stick around and enjoy some of the content. And There's a lot of great albums out right now. I'm really excited for my next new music shuffle, where I can talk about a lot of these great albums that I've missed and haven't been able to talk about yet. So hopefully you'll stay tuned for that as well coming up uh, probably sometime mid to late August. So thank you guys so much for all you guys do. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed the news items. Let me know in the comments of any news items that weren't mentioned here that are interesting to you. Uh, I'd love to hear it and maybe it'll make it onto a future show. And just have a great time out there. Enjoy the music. Listen to some great stuff. Whether it be a Brilliant album, Porcupine Tree album, the new Rio Okamoto album, or just whatever prog you're into or whatever music. So thank you guys so much. And I'll catch you guys in a future video. Bye, everybody.